Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day to everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this online presentation. My name is Muhammad Sufyan bin Misaran. I'm a senior lecturer from University of Malaysia, Sabah. Today, I'm going to present my paper entitled as Feasibility of Using Solar PV Waste Heat to Regenerate Liquid Desiccant. So without further ado, let's go with the video presentation. The content of my presentation are as follows. First of all, we're going to go to the introduction and motivation of this paper. And then after that, we're going to go through to the experimental setup, followed by the result and discussion, and finally, the conclusion. Solar PV is basically one of the well-known renewable energy sources available. Basically, we got the energy solar PV from the sun itself. Basically, convert the energy from the solar PV into electrical energy. But the problem with solar energy is that Main, one of the main issues with solar PV is the efficiency of the solar PV itself. One of the factors that affect the performance of solar PV is basically temperature. So this is kind of ambiguous because solar, since the source of power from solar PV is the sun itself, definitely heat is one of the main issues. So the efficiency of the cell used in solar power plants are only around 17%, whereas the other energy is basically lost through heat and other loss of energy. So cell temperature, that one of the reasons of reducing the, salt, uh, the cell efficiency. Uh, study have reported that with the increased photovoltaic cell temperature, it is found that the cell efficiency drops by 0.4%, which is basically quite a lot. Normally, to control the surface temperature of a solar PV, there, there are many types of cooling method available. They can be categorized into two type, major types. One is passive cooling and the one, other one is active cooling. A passive cooling is basically where the system itself does not require any mechanical means or other methods. Basically, we just use the natural convection, for example. Whereas active cooling, we are using um, mechanical works. For example, we use a water pump to spray water on the surface temperature to reduce the temperature of the solar PV or we use uh, mechanical blowers to blow air to the surface so that the surface temperature of solar PV is reduced. So basically, the, this is what we consider as waste heat. Although that existing uh, arrangement, there's one particular arrangement that utilizes this waste heat is using a PVT arrangement, whereas the solar PV both function to produce electricity as well as to heat up water for, to install hot water. So basically, a solar PV can provide a low-grade heat and is a clean and renewable form of energy by itself. One way of recovering the waste heat is by using them on a liquid desiccant system. A uh, desiccant cooling system basically operate um, on the principle of adsorption, dehumidification, and evaporative cooling. Such system use a natural working fluid and can be driven by low-grade thermal energy which makes them especially useful for integration with solar collector system. Because of this merit, solar-powered desiccant cooling system are widely recognized as good alternative to conventional vapor compression system. So from here, we know that uh, solar PV efficiency actually affected by temperature and high temperature on the solar PV surface actually by only significant uh, amount will affect the efficiency of the solar PV by a significant amount. In Malaysia, for example, the surface of the solar PV can reach up to 70 degrees C, whereas the ideally, the surface temperature should be about 25 to 30 degrees C, which is not very ideal in our hot climate. Whereas for desiccant air conditioning, they use a low-grade heat to regenerate desiccant. So basically, the idea is already exists nowadays where they use the the, uh, they use a solar collector to collect heat and to regenerate the desiccant. But so far, to our knowledge, there is no um, use of solar PV waste heat to regenerate the liquid desiccant. The close um, application would be the solar PVT, where they use uh, the waste heat from the solar PV to heat up the temperature of water. So the main question here is that, is it possible to use a waste heat from a solar PV to regenerate liquid desiccant, whereas at the same time, it also increases the solar PV efficiency and in turn, it will power the, um, it will power the solar desiccant system itself. 
So this is basically what we are trying to achieve in this paper. So in short, the objective of this paper is to investigate the probability of using a solar waste heat to regenerate liquid desiccant in a solar air conditioning system through the heating of circulated water and its effect on solar PV performance. There are three major steps to achieve the objective of this research. The first one is to design the solar PV T itself. Basically, what we are doing is that is of similar to a solar PV T, just that we make a custom made uh, copper tubing and then we uh, attach it at the back of the solar PV. Uh, we use copper pipe as the heat exchanger and then after that we complete the experimental setup with uh, pump tanks and piping to circulate the water. And then after that we continue with the experimental work. The experimental work actually, the target of the experimental work is to calculate the solar PV power output and then from there we can find out the electrical efficiency. At the same time also we will measure the efficiency of the uh, thermal exchange as well. Once the experimental work is completed, then we'll go to the findings of the experiment itself. We are very interested to look into the thermal behavior of the solar PV, how the surface temperature behaves, and what are the temperature of the water at the, uh, at the tank. And then at the same time also, we're going to see the electrical performance of the solar PV. Um, this is the schematic diagram of our experimental setup. There are basically two setups. One is a standalone uh, solar PV without the the uh, the water circulation, and the other one is with the water circulation. So basically, you want to compare the solar PV efficiency, the one with a water circulation and without the water circulation. This figure shows the actual solar PV experimental setup. The one on the top right is the setup that we are doing. Uh, we have a small bucket or a small tank and then we use water pump to circulate the water and the solar PV that you see here is the 50 watt variant and then we just simply use a very simple setup of copper tubings at the back of the solar PV to reduce the temperature of the solar PV surface. So what you see here is basically the specification of the solar PV that we use in this study. So this is the uh, data collected during the experimental work. So on the middle column is basically the performance of the solar PV without the cooling system. Whereas on the right hand side is basically the performance of the solar PV with heat recovered with the cooling system itself. So as you can see the, the average mix and mean uh, performance are shown here. Whereas for performance of the solar PV with heat recovered, they, we also have the thermal efficiency, the water tank, average temperature, and the surface of the solar PV. So actually from here, you can see that there's a difference in temperature, in efficiency, and solar PV, uh, and uh, as well as the water temperature as well. So after we completed the experimental work and then obtained the data that have been shown as shown in the previous slide, so we study the thermal behavior. The maximum temperature for the cooling system or the top surface was found at 55.10 degrees C at 1 p.m. while the temperature for the standard top surface system was 62.3 degrees C, a very stark difference. This shows that with the heat recovery system, it can lead to an increase in conversion efficiency and power output for PV cells due to the reduction of the panel temperature. In terms of electrical performance, the power generated by the solar PV system with a waste heat recovery system produces better power output compared to the standard configuration and thus better efficiency as shown in this particular figure. This is expected as the cooler surface temperature would translate to better efficiency with maximum efficiency recorded at 15.22%. The total power produced by the system with a cooling PV panel is basically 261.43 watt hour per day and a non-cooling PV panel is 212.76 watt hour per day. As a conclusion for this study, the experimental result shows that waste heat from solar PV was able to increase the temperature of the circulated water by 15.5 degrees C, and it remained stable at around 55.5 degrees C. So the temperature again indicates that it is possible to use this setup to regenerate liquid desiccant solution for solar air conditioning system. Also, Quite obviously, with the waste heat recovered solar PV, they 
also have the reduced average operating temperature thus they have better uh, solar better power output and uh, solar pv efficiency and with that i conclude my presentation and we'll see you in the um, in the next session so in the meantime if you have any questions please do so and make comments in the comment section thank you and have a very nice day